everybody, we're back with another episode of uh, The Weekly Reader. And so we're super glad to, to be here. We have a full agenda and we have a whole lot to talk about with Biden's big week, Trump's big break and NBC's big mistake. And that's just the start of tonight's live stream. Wherever you're watching us, we are super thankful that you are. If you are watching us on the X platform, we appreciate it, but we really want you to move over to the YouTube platform, 3 Plus One Media ZK, so that way you can engage with us in the comments. We definitely want you to drop comments uh, and let us kind of know who you are and where you are. We start off right here with an early commenter. Thank you so much, Kat. Kat is a super fan. We love you. We appreciate you. We're so thankful that you're out there. She said that the Supreme Court rules in favor of the conservative doctors that the FDA should not have approved the abortion appeal because they overlook safety issues and I'm bringing a similar case on Viagra and Cialis and I strongly recommend that you do so. From looking at those Supreme Court justices, I can imagine that one man on that Supreme Court can do anything but use those resources to find any semblance of carnal pleasure in 2024. Um, so, you know, with that being said, uh, and I know Shante is here, let's just bring everybody on stage. We got the whole crew in the house tonight uh, and Everybody, how are you doing? Like you said, it's been crazy. You can't even like look away from your phone for one minute and some shit is popping off. Like it's mm. keeping up with this news cycle is crazy. That's a lot going on. Like I said, look, in the words of Brian Bays down there, breaking news every five minutes. Baby, breaking news every five minutes. Now, Brian, Brian, Brian my ass is going to send you that breaking news as soon as it drops. He's going to send it to you as soon as it drops. So with that being said, we kind of start off with giving, of course, not only our thoughts and our prayers, but whatever we can to the people of Baltimore at this time frame with a specific focus on Baltimore's migrant community and their Latino community and finding out that the... Uh, what we suspect to be the victims of this horrific accident were members of those communities. So lots and lots of love to those communities as they are mourning and they are in grief. This has become a worldwide headline, but not only has it become a worldwide headline, it's also become unfortunately the subject of really disgusting trolls as they are using this as an excuse to attack DEI, even though that makes no sense. Mm hmm. It, yeah. I, yeah, Kenny, I know you, you you brought this to the attention. You said you definitely wanted me to add in. So I'll go to you and, and like for you to sit here and talk about. Uh, and they're happy. Yeah, you know, Kenny's the Beyonce of the group, right? So you got Kenny. You know, we got you got you got you got uh we'll do a quick run. I'm gonna do a quick run through for you. So you got Beyonce and we got, you know, Kelly and we got Michelle and we got another Michelle. Uh you know, you know, we'll, 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 yeah, Michelle. She might be a Latavia. But I'm fair, far fair. I'll be fair. That's fine. Latoya, Latoya. Oh yeah, I love Latoya, and I'll be, and I'll be my butt right here, and uh, I, I'm fine. I'm fine to be fair. I had two two weeks in the game, and and it was over. Kenny, what what do you think about you know these horrific, these really embarrassing comments, and not embarrassing on the part of the mayor, but embarrassing on the part of these uh, conservative trolls who are using this as an excuse to attack diversity, equity, and inclusion. Yeah. See, these people don't even understand what D DEI does not respond when it comes to somebody who's an elected official who was literally elected with 70% of the vote. Not only that, in a population of 60 African-Americans, a heavily populated African-American community, which he represents a constituency. Mayor Scott is doing everything he can on the ground works. He's reached out to um, Governor Westmore and Biden and actually... Biden put out a statement today saying that he will be providing any type of federal assistance needed for those on the ground. So we have a good commander in chief ready and willing to help out the people in need. But the thing, it's just a dog whistle. People attacking DEI when you're an elected official. I think it's a new thing, just like when people say CRT or what is it, um, woke or I guess DEI is the new thing for another word or another racial epithet to use the N-word on a slight. One episode. Just because a black person somewhere they're not supposed to be. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I mean, you know, that type, that one poster who went viral who said, uh, this is the DEI mayor, right? And branding it in that way. Like, and a lot of people coming out and saying, this is the new N-word. This is what you're trying to say now. And this is the, and there was even some white people. I, was it Lawrence O'Donnell or somebody was posting like, this is exactly what they mean when they say it. 
So I'm glad that they're actually putting it into this context. So I think that that's, that's um, something good to talk about. I also wanted to talk about um, how people are, Republicans are now coming out and using this tragedy for political points. And I made a po post about this, particularly Nancy Mace, who was on uh, Newsmax, talking about the fact that she was blaming the Biden administration, because of course, Biden is involved with all of these things, right? Uh, but blaming specifically the infrastructure bill that was passed and saying that this, the reason why this bridge collapsed was because of this, right? Instead of the, using the, the actual thing that we saw with our eyes, and there's videos, footage out there, and I put it even in my video, where literally you see the ship coming in the ship lost power. The generators came on for for a temporary moment, and then they went back out. And the, at that point, it was too late to steer the ship out of the way. The ship then collided, and every civil engineer who came out and you saw, as you saw reported, came out and said that there is no bridge that would withstand the level of impact from a from a boat or ship that size. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's just not. And there were some other people posting some scalings, right? They posted this, um, a picture of this uh, building and said that this was 497 feet. At one point, this was the biggest building in this specific area. This this uh, ship was 498 feet for context, right? And for perspective. So at the end of the day, you know, this is, again, another demonstration of how Republicans will stoop at no low to you know, uh, just use this for political points. It's crazy. There's people still in the water that were, there was a rescue mis mission still happening in the moment. And these people are coming and out. Nancy Mace jumped on to Newsmax. You know, Nancy Mace is all of a sudden emerging as a figure because she realizes that Katie Britt, who was the heir apparent, failed, fumbled her chance. And so Nancy Mace wants her chance. Uh, Nancy Mace, at least Katie Britt, knew how to put on makeup and, and brush her hair. At least Katie Britt knew that. You have a long way to go before you can be anywhere near getting the recognition that you think you deserve. She was on uh, this week with George Stephanopoulos sounding moronic. And now we see her this week back to where she belongs into the gutter trash of Newsmax, Newsmax sounding moronic. Mm. I want to hear what Carrie has to say or Shantae has to say about this because I know that there was a lot of right, I can't do it the way. Yeah, I, I can't I can't say what I want to say about Nancy May. She ain't gonna get me talking about a woman. Get me. I mean by get me canceled. I don't I'm not going to I don't want to say anything about Nancy Mace. I think she's a waste of our time here, to be totally honest with you. I think that she is the flavor of the moment. She mm. really is trying to be that person that thinks she's going to be Trump's VP pick because she has maybe one of the qualities that he likes, two of the qualities that he likes. She would thinks that she's easy on the eyes. And also she is a pick me. But um, I really just want to just. I just want to say this whole DEI thing is the uh, ma the baby of Christopher Rufo, who also mm. was the one that created uh, critical race theory. And they have no shame about it. They, they say straight out, listen, we want to make it so when someone hears DEI, they associate it with something bad. And that's what we see happening. But y'all, it's not DEI that's the problem of like Boeing, which they tried to blame it on, or the, you know, train derailments. It's deregulation, motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. you guys it is deregulation. deregulation. The last president before has deregulated literally everything. And that's when we started to see a lot of these problems. Now, that's not the case with this particular issue. We know that the boat, the, the, the shipping company had issues with this particular boat and more and more are starting to come out about that. But again, it's just a way to politicize everything and also be racist. Yep. And, and, and that's 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 what they're doing. And really, one thing that they did say that just stuck out with me. Uh, I believe it was Maria uh, Bartomono or whatever her name is. Um, yeah. She was like, oh, you know, do you think that this is going to make inflation go back up? It's like they are just itching for the American public to hurt. They, and, they just want disaster so bad so that they can use that for political gain. And it just shows you how despicable they are. And my question is, can anybody on this panel tonight tell me what Maria Bartiromo was talking about and trying to relate this issue with the border being open. Is that, that Maria Bartiromo, who don't people who don't know, she's a Fox News anchor. She started talking about the border being open and how this is connected somehow. So I still don't understand that. And again, this goes to show how they're consistently using any talking point because they have nothing. 
This is what happens when you try to stick, when you try to throw everything at the wall to see what sticks. Because at this point, they know that the Republican Party is currently imploding, and that there's a lot of there's a lot of issues, a lot of issues. On that note, I just want to add one thing. So there, there is a Republican memo that went out to candidates that said this, and this is actually good for Democrats. They said, it's not enough for you to simply attack Joe Biden. And you know why they said that? Because he's not a historically unpopular president. He is a very strong candidate, and they know that they are in trouble. They just don't have anything. And, and they keep, finally, like said, the media is sharing that data widely. Finally, we're getting yes. the truth about the polls and about our president's popularity. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think the way to combat this is to highlight more things like this. So the trolls are going to do what they're going to do. I think it's kind of like a non-issue what they're doing. Like, they don't matter. But I think it's important for us to uplift the strength of the Democratic leadership of Baltimore and the Democratic leadership of Maryland at times like this and talk about the good that having solid leadership available does. Too many Americans have forgotten the disaster of America's coronavirus response and what happens when you have failed leadership in office and how that leadership can just decimate an entire population. As a resident of Georgia, where we had a governor who refused to shut down, who stayed open, and as a result, thousands of lives were lost, many of them, unfortunately, Republican in, in this red state. Uh, you know, the people have forgotten what that was like. And, and they kind of think, oh, it was unavoidable. It happened everywhere. When in actuality, there are places where this didn't happen. There, there were safeguards were put in place and people followed those safeguards and lives were saved. Lives were spared until a vaccine could come on board. So I think it's important to emphasize that when you have strong, good Democratic leadership at the helm, you can make it through a crisis. And you can not only make it through a crisis, you can make it through a crisis stronger. Right. And make make mention of the fact that they started talking about his jacket, right? They were trying to they were trying to say that he was unprofessional for a, arriving at the scene wearing a jacket, but the, the the jacket literally said the city of Baltimore. And they also started posting other folks that are obviously that are you know on our side posting out there in the content. They showed Chris Christie going out there when they when he went to go to respond to, to crisis, and he had a sweatsuit on. They showed Trump wearing that that sweater, you know, zip up. They showed. Uh, Governor DeSantis coming up there with them white boots, the white rubber, uh, uh, <laughs> green the boots. Right. So again, and it's just like, what are you, what you're really trying to say? And we see you, but I think I love I, those boots. Those boots, they kitty kitty <laughs> come here, meow. I love them. I yeah. love can it when talk, I see that picture. Can we talk about real brief? Can we talk about real briefly though the city of Baltimore and the response that they did have? Because truthfully, I don't know if you guys watched the video, but that ship made the mayday call when they realized yes. that hey, and they they stopped the cars like they saved. In my opinion, you know, probably hundreds of lives because yes. the city of Baltimore was able to stop the cars at the right moment so that there weren't more cars on that. Actually, I don't think any cars made went into the um into the water so the city of baltimore i think handled it uh probably the best that they can with you know minimizing the loss of lives um so and you had conspiracy you had conspiracy theorists coming online saying that it was a terrorist attack which it was not and there was no evidence of that and going back to the mayday call like people were like no the evidence shows that they did a mayday call they alerted authorities they let people know so that they can remove people from the bridge so that they stop traffic and all this stuff so you know people were going to run with that and say it was an inside job it wasn't so we go to election 2024 and the first part of tonight's uh title which is uh, President Biden's uh, big news or good news. And the good news is that we have some brand new polls uh, that came out. It was a Bloomberg morning national poll that indicated that President Trump had, I mean, that President Biden had gained significantly on President, uh, on former President Trump in a number of battleground states where now he is leading in Wisconsin Increasing in Tide in Michigan and Pennsylvania, the, the three blue wall states that he des that he definitely must win in order to remain president of these United States. Additionally, it's shown that he showed that he had gains in both Nevada and Arizona and North Carolina, although we have not seen those gains in my home state 
of Georgia, as I told you, uh, I don't think that we will see. But also we saw that this week in the Republican primary, uh, President Trump in Florida, President Trump did not do as well as expected, even though Haley, uh, Nikki Haley is no longer on the ballot. She, I mean, running, she was on the ballot and she still garnered almost 20 percent of the votes, showing that even in the state of Florida, where Donald Trump lives, he is vulnerable. I think this is really good news. I think it shows and finally a level of polling and reporting that shows the American people what we all know, that President Biden is a very strong candidate for re-election as we go into November. Uh, what do you guys think about this and what we've seen? I think I had it in the notes to start off with Kenny on this. The polls are always wrong. I mean, they've been wrong for the longest time. They've been wrong in 2020. They've been wrong in 2022. They said that we would lose in the midterms. We get our ass whooped. They flipped the Senate. We'd lose so many seats. But none of those things happen because we shouldn't listen to the polls. It's not about what the polls are saying. It's about who actually shows up. And I think as long as we continue hammering on the accomplishments of the Biden-Harris administration, that that will be able to break through the voters more than whatever corporate media is trying to put out and lead with this narrative as if Biden isn't doing anything. I think if we can bring people back, like snap people back from reality, because I think a lot of people are suffering from, and I read an article, it said a lot of people are suffering right now from pre-COVID to where a lot of us haven't been able to wrap our minds around what's actually happening or what we actually went through to see how far we've come within this administration and how we're leading out of that pre-pandemic and moving forward with everything that's moving forward as far as like our economy, our jobs, seeing wages increase, seeing how much money we're actually investing into the states, how many new jobs we've created. Yeah, infrastructure, all of these things. I think a lot of us, we have to just hammer it home and start connecting the dots for voters so they can see it happening in their own real life. Yeah. Listen, I don't believe in the polls when we're down. I don't believe in the polls when we're up. I got to be honest. I, for me personally, I agree with what Kenny's saying. Like, we can't take we can't take a bad poll and say, oh, don't trust polls. And then when we get a good poll, oh, but that's the harbinger. That's going to let us know when we're going to win. I don't believe in that. I believe in let's look at what what uh, voters are actually saying. I love that they're vo actually amplifying uh, voter opinions. Like you see these accounts like the Biden HQ account and other accounts. They're actually going out, interviewing voters, Nikki Haley supporters that say they will never vote for Trump. Um, there are, and, and some won't vote, vote for Biden, but they just won't vote for Trump. So that's, that it is what it is. Then you have, and they're going to vote for, you know, local and state elections. Then you have some people who say that they voted for Trump in the past, but can never vote for him again. They either voted for him in 2016 or 2020, but won't vote for him again because he's gone too far. Whatever that pivot point was, it, it is what it is, but we're looking and we have to listen to the actual people on the ground because those are the people who are going to show up to vote on the day of. Are we still focused on exciting our base and looking at the people in the middle who are the vast majority of people who may be, I don't know, and saying, how do we bring you in? And I think we've been doing that. That's what I care about. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing I will say about the polls. I agree with everyone. The polls, the polls are, um, they suck, but there are some, there are some decent polls out there that are somewhat reputable. Um, the problem is, is that there's a ton polling has gotten really expensive because no one answers their damn phone. Mm. So I read, I read a story where it used to cost, it used to be where you could dial maybe 15 people up and they would get on the phone. Now a pollster has to dial for like 2.5 hours before anyone even picks up the phone. That shit gets expensive. And when money is involved, it opens up the floodgates for Republicans or right wing people to basically flood the zone with these shitty polls because they use them for uh, fundraising. They use them for talking points. They use them to appease the orange man that used to be in office. Um, but what we have found is to date in this election cycle, the polling data for the uh, primaries for Trump has been off from eight to 10 points. And so when you look at that eight to 10% margin, that's the whole ball game. That's the ball game right there. And so that's why you can't trust polls, whether Biden is up or whether Trump is up. But it, it, I think it helps people with their um, morale to see. It's just like, okay, there's some good news, right? So I'll take it, but we still got to do the work. Mm. Shante, what do you think? Well, 
Hello, everyone. So here's the thing. I'm glad the president is getting, you know, praising and finally getting polled higher. But like Brian, like everyone on the panel have said, we have to turn out, we have to excite our base. And the Biden and Harris administration got to, and their surrogates got to do more, got to be a little cocky with their, with their accomplishments because they have done so much good. Like last week, are we better off four year today than four years ago? Absolutely. I mean, if it wasn't for this administration, we wouldn't have access to the vaccine. There was no plan in 2020. I was telling my mom and my sister that on the phone yesterday, there was literally no freaking plan to combat COVID. We have almost 1.2 million people deceased succumb to COVID. And that's because of the mishandling from the quote unquote administration. And I never refer to Donald Trump as president. He is the bum, the bum and his minions, which is, um, well, the bum, his doula and his min and his minions, his doula is Michael Richard Pence. And it will always be Michael Richard Pence. Michael Richard Pence cannot wipe the stench off of, of Donald Trump. And, and believe it or not, and I'm going to be real, even Nimrata, can't even wipe off the stench because she said he was a great quote unquote president of, of that time. No, he was not. He literally campaigned and governed on fear. He said American carnage, like what leader in the white house would say something like that. So when I hear people talking about, I don't know, I'm not sure. I think you need to look at, you know, maybe you're not feeling the finances now because to be honest, as a person who studied business and got their degree in business and who's going back for their master's in business, this is a slow economic recovery. Even though our GDP is higher, even though our, our GNP is higher, and our economy is doing much better than England, even though England was stupid to do Blexit. I'm going to say that they were dumb as hell, dumb as rocks, because I remember that. We still, it's still more work to be done. Americans are going to feel it soon. I see certain prices go down in Target. I remember paying almost $9 for an um mouthwash. Now I'm paying $6.59 at Target. So, right, we know it's the corporation's finagling and price gouging right we know that and we have i thank god for my ag which i'm pretty sure she's on the topic my ag from combating these people that's price gouging mm -hmm. so we have to look at what this administration has done and what they're continuing to do it and they're still canceling more loans they're not done with canceling loans they're not done they got public service i'm pretty sure they got more people to do because i'm pretty sure i'm more one of the people they got to do Right. So I, I, I need people and I tell people all the time, I even talk to some young people and then it's not even really the young people. It's some people around, my, it's some, not all, but the ignorant ones that did not pay attention in school, the ones that cut class, those are the, the, the dumb dumbs that's getting interviewed by Fox News talking about, oh, I'm paying more money. First of all, that bum, that bum is the reason why. The tax codes have changed. His tax codes is expiring next year. That's why he's also running so hard. And that's also why Republicans are running so hard because their ta that tax code is going to expire on December 31st, 2025. Mm. And Democrats, if, if we're smart enough, which I know we are, President Biden can be very historic on setting the tax codes for 2026 and beyond. So we got to think about economics because Republicans think of economics. They just effed up on economics. Like, look at um, Richard Nixon's financial plans. Ford was dumb. Reaganomics is the reason why stuff is messed up today. And Bush tax cuts was not even better. So as Democrats, let us, we, we need to start thinking about Making sure American families are safe because I once heard in school when the middle class and the middle of America does better and when the working class, I don't like to say poor, when the working class does better, America does better economically and socially. And those social programs, 
not I don't like to call it welfare, but like those social programs, the HRA programs, that's what I guess we call them here. It actually lifts up American families. When American families get a leg up, they the country does better. So this conservative fiscal hawk, I believe is absolute farce. Well, you bring up Use a really my good intelligence. Point. Yeah, you bring up a really good point. I want to say uh, about because you brought up Blex, uh, Brexit, and which really was a Blexit because it really was about racism and xenophobia in Great Britain, uh, as is a lot of the fastest rise in European countries. And so they allowed conservative leaders to push this decision on them, to encourage them and to inspire them to make this decision that has cost them uh, an economic recovery and has pushed them to, I mean, really the brink of financial disaster. A great article popped up. I want to say it's from the New Yorker. Uh, I think it came up, up as the Apple News Spotlight article while I was like in spin class today and it popped up on my phone. I had to silence it. But I looked at it very briefly and I thought and I said to myself, this is going to be a great piece of content because that could have been us. Had Donald Trump been reelected, that would have been the, the financial situation of the American economy. But because of Bidenomics, and I don't have a I don't care if the, I don't work for the administration. Unlike the dumbasses saying that we're getting paid, I, I, I don't get paid. So I can say what I want to say. I don't work for them. I like the term Bidenomics. I'm going to say Bidenomics every time I talk about the American economy because Bidenomics has kept America from going off the brink into a recession and has helped us continue to improve and has us on the right financial track as stocks are soaring, as uh, people's retirement funds are getting more money in them uh, to pad against what could happen if the worst comes to worst in November. So I have absolutely no, no problem with that. The last thing my polls is, I agree with what everyone has said, uh, you know, polls have, this is the problem. This is, well, let me give you a different, a little bit of a different approach. Polls point out issues that we need to be aware of and problem areas that we may need to address. But the, pro but the biggest issue is that we can't look at the polls on the television or that the mainstream media is picking out to show us because they have a different agenda at play, which is about panic, fear mongering, clicks and views. Right. We can no longer trust MSNBC or or CNN or any of these programs, any of these programs to be in the best interest of the American people. And I think that has been finally proven the final death nail in their coffin cane this week that we'll talk about a little bit later in the show. But what I do is I look at Simon Rosen. I think it's Simon Rosenberg or Simon Rosenbaum. I look at a lot of different people and a lot of different polls. So I, I don't know look at just about. what. Yeah, I don't look at just what they throw at us because that's they, they pull the worst of the worst to cause panic and fear. Uh, but I look at a variety of polls to say, yes, this is where we're going. And I so, just, yeah, oh, when you know, like every time we've had like a MSNBC highlighting a poll that shows Biden is down, I have found four other polls that show that Biden is up. So that's why I'm like, you know, it, you got to do your due diligence and then do your research in the in the in what you get to then say where the real issues are. And so, in looking at all of the polls that came out at the end of March, I'm saying Georgia is not trending well at all. So that lets me know there's a lot of work to be done in this state, and it's time to apply pressure to the Georgia Democratic leaders, although it will make a difference. But still, the effort can be put in place to still push them to do something, although they won't do anything. But again, we can still try. But, but not, what, go, go, oh, ahead. go ahead. No, no, no. Go I was, was going to say was just, you know, Zach is right. And also, it's another thing. And I don't want to see, like, I have to address this this demographic once again. I feel like white voters, the majority, not all, if it doesn't apply, let it fly. The majority of white voters, what the problem is, is like they vote on their feelings. They vote with their pocketbooks mostly. They vote with their feelings and they vote for what is fresh and new instead of what is good for the country. And what's good for the country is you need good leaders that can unite a country. And the president's trying to do that with all his might. It's just you have the the party of now the bum and his and 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 with the pre MAGA era of Reagan, like the, that's 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 the party of of today, and unfortunately, they don't want to work with the president. They don't want to work with the president. You don't have to agree with the president on his ideology, but simple stuff like voting rights, voting rights, it's a, a well, it should not be a ensuring that the government issue. doesn't shut down. Even more simple than voting rights, just ensuring that the government doesn't shut down. 
yeah. but it, it, it's it's just sad and and you know like this that demographic once again keeps voting with and that's why sometimes it's hard to trust it's literally hard to trust because especially more so the white women you think if your your right to choose and your child's right to be who they are is under attack and you're still going to vote for people that's not doing anything like this was the least productive congress i ever saw in my well, almost 38 and, years and of life one thing and i'm going to go to you next brian but one thing that i think we have to say one thing i've experienced on social media i am out here making videos that constantly get attacked and suppressed uh, i am finding that there are a number of lgbtqia plus people who do not look like me, who are very happy to not vote or not care or be one issue voters, right? Like there's that one issue. And that comes from a place of privilege because at the end of the day, they're really not double minorities uh, like I am. Like I'm a, part of, I'm a part of multiple marginalized groups and there's no hope for me if Donald Trump is reelected to serve as president of these United States. Uh, there is a lot of hope for them because they can adjust, they can shift, they can blend in, they are going to be okay. Hmm. It's me, I'm not going to be okay. And one thing that not enough people are doing, in my opinion, is bringing up the true reality of the fear that is in our hearts. Like I am literally definitely afraid of another Trump administration. And I have no problem saying that it's time for me to lean into that fear and show that to the American people in the social media content that I'm creating. Because fear is one hell of a motivator on the other side. Maybe it'll right. be a greater, it'll be also a motivator on our side uh, but the also motivator and go go ahead brian I, I'll, I'll chime in on that myself. no i think what you were i think what you were going to say is maybe what i'm what i'm about to say about that specific point is that while they have fear we have hope and i think that there's a i think that there's a difference there's a complete difference between that but but i'll let uh, kenny talk about that I but think how is our hope but how is the hope uh, what I, how is hope working right now that's the problem See, this, hope, I, I was gonna hillary clinton had a phenomenal hope platform in 2016 and that hope didn't override donald trump's fear it didn't override the fear of the browning of america it didn't yeah, override the fear of a woman being in power it didn't override the fear that we're going to take something from them that we could never take from them so i don't know if a hope message from from us is what people in america need to hear I think that was in 2016. I think it's 2024. It's a different era. It's a different context. I think it's a different political landscape. And I think, to be honest with you, we saw that hope in 2020 when uh, when he won the first time. Again, and I do, we talked about this last time. He had Biden came in at a time where there was a dichotomy that needed to be shown. And he showed a direct antithesis and contrast to what what Donald Trump was. Donald Trump didn't give a damn about masks. He didn't give a damn about people dying. He didn't give a damn about uh, uh, actions and how people live. And at the end of the day, we saw him for what who he was when at the end of the day, Biden came in as a statesman. Biden came in and said, we're going to have these virtual rallies. We're going to sit around. We're going to sit around and do intimate conversations with people with masks. We're going to do at home rallies. Get, get in your damn cars and honk your horn while I'm up here speaking so that way people are safe and do the social distancing. And that was something that he was critiqued for. But at the end of the day, he won. And at the end of the day, it's I not going to win in 2024. I think I think you're wrong. I, th I don't. This I, is the thing. Well, we don't even hear me and Brian we'll argue see. more we'll because see. we don't. We disagree a lot about a lot of stuff. And let me give you a very brief breakdown of why it's not going to win. Oh. People had hope in 2020. And unfortunately, what you see on social media are a lot of people who thought miracles were going to happen. Like this was the Prince of Egypt and Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey were up on the stage singing. Uh, you know, that there will be miracles and that miracles will happen in the course of three years. And what's amazing and what's crazy is that there really were some miracles that happened. Some great, amazing things happened. And the first two years, of the Biden administration, although the majority of, of Democratic leadership in the in, in our Congress was slim, great things did happen. But because they did not get every single thing they wanted to get from the hope that they hoped for, they're now saying they're not gonna vote. They're now saying they're gonna withhold their vote. So I don't believe a platform of just hope. I'm not saying don't, I'm not saying the president should go dark. I'm not saying Kamala, our vice president should go dark. But what I am saying is that a message of hope is not going to be enough to motivate these one issue voters to get up out of their seats and vote again for President Biden. 
And we need those voters, at least some of them, to, to be activated in this upcoming election to make the difference. We really will need them. And to me, it's like looking at what's happening in North Carolina, where you have this Black Republican gu- gubernatorial nominee who hates gay people, who wants to subjugate women, using that is a motivating factor. We, we've seen it. And in, in Florida, we have abortion on the ballot. L- using the fear that women are going to lose their reproductive rights in this state, those are the things that I believe will get voters who are on the fence, who are independent, or who are tapped out, up, and ready to go. We can I talk want- about the fearful love all day, I mean, the hopeful love all day, but I don't think it's going to work in 2024. I just want to say this, and I don't want to interrupt the guys and, and Miss Care, Care Bear down there, but I'm, I'm going to say this, and, and people going to hate me for this yeah. but real is real new york new york voters are most of the voters are stupid okay like i'm sorry but most american voters that they, 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 they're foolish and 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 they're not they're not waking and paying attention to understand how our democracy is at risk it's literally at risk when they see more people like me like you zachary like you, Mr. Kenneth or Kenny, like you, Brian, like you, Miss Carrie, like me, Shantae, when they see people like us voting, it scares the dog crap out of them. For example, we're all marginalized communities. You want to get technical? Care Bears, you know, uh, parents' marriage, they probably, they trying to roll that crap back, you know, and l- l- let's be honest. Brian, you're you're known to be what? Afro Latino, and they figure like they don't want you to be represented. Kenneth and and and, and Zachary, you're you're black and you're the part of the LGBTQ plus community. Me, I'm a black woman. I'm the other. If somebody call me the N word, I swear to God, if it pops out of their mouth, they're getting decked in their face. I know that, and I don't want to promote no violence, but I'm just saying like. The majority of voters are dumb because honestly, to tell you the truth, like if you vote and you think it and I understand one issue voters, but I get it. But as of now, if you see what you see on TV, how these people are not passing bills, they only passed 37 bills last year, last year. Like they don't understand that the president can't do everything. He can't literally do everything. The conflict that happened in Israel. What do you expect? Donald Trump was in bed with Nimyatu. Let's let let's be honest. He was doing everything behind closed doors. That man, I knew when that man snuck up in that White House, that bum from Jamaica Estates snuck in that White House and did what he did. And I know like half of this stuff talking about people say, oh, I got more money under Donald Trump. No, you did not. No, you did not. The biggest losers were black people that make under $95,000. Okay, so like, honest, Zach, you know, I, I agree with you. Like, hope is not going to win. But right now, the Biden and administration need to tell on their accomplishments, compare their accomplishments to that knucklehead's accomplishments, where there is no accomplishments out that he destroyed our reputation around the world. And, you know, we got all these problems with our, these foreign folks because, like, He's just and in the rise of China. Let's let's be honest. And the Republican Party is embarrassing themselves. They're doing a real good job. But if voters want to vote for that, y'all give me no reason to call y'all stupid. Sorry, not sorry. Well, let me just say I this. Just, oh. Okay. Hey, Carrie. Carrie. I know you. Go hey, ahead, Carrie. Carrie. And then I'll I, I just got one thing. I got into it the other night on a live with a white male member of the LGBTQ community who was safe in a blue state. And this is what I said to him because he was on his, I'm not voting for Biden. And I said, let me, let me just ask you this. Why is it that a conflict that started hundreds of years ago that had nobody in decades has been able to solve, why did their rights supersede my daughter's rights who's growing up in a fucking country that is gonna, she's gonna have less rights than I do. She is going to have less rights than I do. And why should a country super far away take precedence over what we're doing here. Please and so help and me what, what was his what was his answer? He said I hear you. He pulled he tried to pull that bullshit I hear you. I said no, I don't think you do because we've been through this time and time again. You come onto my feed and you push half the time you push this anti like it's misinformation. Then he tried to go with well 
it was under Biden that that your daughter's rights got taken away. I said, he's not doing anything. That's what he tried to say. And I said, don't you ever, ever, ever fix your mouth to say that shit. You know damn well who appointed those judges. Mm. I go, why don't you tell me? What do you know about the Comstock Act? Do you know anything about the Comstock Act? I bet you don't. I bet you don't know that if a Republican gets in the White House, they can ban abortion nationwide and they don't even need the House due to the Comstock Act. And it was, in fact, Joe Biden's rule on the Comstock Act that has protected uh, uh, access to uh, the abortion drug. Like, you didn't know that. He's like, well, I didn't know that. I'm not that political. I said, here's the deal. Then why are you out here sitting here to try to talk on the issue and spewing misinformation and convincing people that they should go with kind of right. you're you're using your platform on social media on a right. live or any platform to to, to 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 speak misinformation and you're not informed enough to be in the conversation not informed enough and then he said this and i'll let you talk kenny he said this he said well i'm just preparing for uh, a, a Republican president. I said, you know what? While you're sitting back, sitting on social media, complaining in your safe blue state with your white skin, I said, you know what we're going to be doing? We're going to be working to ensure that shit doesn't happen. Like, you can sit here and prepare for it, and you can sit here and complain for it, or you can get up off your ass and pick a race and fucking work so it doesn't happen. That's mm. all I had to say. He can prepare oh, all day. He can sit here, he can Karen. starve, he can fast, pissed. he can clean out, and he'll still be unsatisfied and empty. Uh, Kenny, you were going to say? Um, I think the best approach is there could be a, there could be a balance of both. I mean, there's some people who will work on the fear mongering, and there's some people who are going to inspire hope. Um, I'm going to be on the mixed side of things because what I've come to realize is, again, I don't follow what the polls say. I follow what people say. And I've actually had a come to Christ moment with somebody that I work with, uh, actually my boss particularly. The problem is a lot of people are on the grind to where they don't have the time to be politically engaged. Sometimes we have to take yeah. what we, you know, show as being political savvy and, you know, living and breathing and eating and being able to digest all the things that's being thrown at us. A lot of us are checked out. That's what's going on with the average American. They don't have time to be like, oh, well, let me just. So what they they're not going to spend hours watching CNN, MSNBC or reading and sifting through articles and documents and policies trying to figure out, OK, what, what can I use and what can I do from this? So they're going to go to TikTok. They're going to go to YouTube. They're going to go and watch a little five minute clip, two minute, three minute clip because they don't have time. They got to be right back on the front and clog back in and work and during those two or three jobs and work that nine to five because they got to get that paper. So we have to understand and we have to empathize with people when it comes to that. And we have to be able to provide what, again, the Biden-Harris administration has done for them so they can apply to their everyday lives. Again, I was talking to my boss and she said, I don't know, don't look like it's going to be good for Biden. You know, he wasn't able to fulfill his promise on student loan forgiveness. You know, I'm still paying what I'm paying. I said, wait a minute, ma'am. Did you look up the student loan repayment program? Have you looked up SAVE? She said, no, what is that? I'm like, okay, we got two minutes. Let's do it right now before we clock in. We went onto the website in less than two minutes, you guys. Mm -hmm. She gets, uh, um, she gets a, a response back saying that her payment's going to go from three hundred and ninety-eight dollars to forty-seven dollars a month. Right. There you she go. Sounds like you just proved Shantae's point. You sounds like you just proved Shantae's point. I said, look, look. You gotta have to remember. Guess who did that? Not me. Biden did that. And there's things available for all of us when we're sitting here looking for information. Because I said, look, if you could look up the newest Jays, you can look up these Beyonce concert tickets, you can figure out who's going to go on tour and all this other things and when the album's going to drop. It only takes a few minutes to get this information. I understand that you may not have that time, but don't sit here and say and go off of what the Internet is telling you. Sometimes you have to go look for the information yourself. And some of these people on the that, internet are dumb. But part of that is having empathy because I didn't attack her and say, oh, fuck you, da 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 da, and cuss her out and say, you're stupid. What I did is take that time, recognize her pain point, right? bring her something that was substantive that came from the Biden Harris administration so right. she could see it in real time. And now she's about to go tell her family and she's about to go vote for Biden in November. So we have to be able to talk about a message of hope that's substantive. Look for anything. When somebody's having these complaints and saying, well, this is what I feel, and what can you do for me? 
Remember when I did my Cardi B video and I had to break down what was going on in New York and talked about, no, you're blaming Biden, but this is all the things that Biden have done. And this is what's going on in your local state government. So you can't yes. hold Biden accountable for that. Biden did. She don't even she don't even but live there anymore. That? I don't know but, where she lives. But, but what just, if they I, already I, know that? Georgia. Like, what if they already know? What if the, they already know that? What if they say I know? What if they and they truly do? Because just so you all know, this was not that. my first go around with. If this they guy, already like, know that, and they're on the free nice. Palestine thing, and his, his vote doesn't line, matter, child. Let that. let that girl go. And you know what's so crazy though? Like the UN literally voted for a ceasefire. Like they literally did because, like, um, was it Ambassador <laughs> Thomas? That's that's her that's her name was in was you know because she's living here because the UN is not that far from away from my house. I mean, sh they was literally talking about they doing a ceasefire, literally a ceasefire, and it was Hamas was uh, rejected Biden's deal at first, and you know Nimyatu's corrupt ass. He gonna do what he do. So uh, as one of the people well, on said Hamas rejected the ceasefire and then began to once again launch rockets directly at Israel. Now, I again, I, I look at multiple news reports. I look at Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera as well as like the uh, Israeli, a uh, Jewish time. I look at a whole bunch of different things. And so I'm very careful in trying to even say what happens over there because I feel like a lot of misinformation is getting to us. But that was several reports that I saw that Hamas rejected the ceasefire deal. That this was just recently because I, I this heard was yesterday. yesterday. This was last night. They said last oh, night oh, okay. that Hamas Hamas was rejected. not accepting the deal. And then they launched multiple rockets yeah. over to Israel that were... Uh, intercepted by the the defense systems but i do want to keep us moving very quickly because we, we only we've only talked about biden's big week we have not talked about donald trump's big break uh and that he is not going to have to pay the 454 million he only has to come up with 175 million and he gets 10 days to do it does he even have that money because he's selling bibles because is he asking mm -hmm. God to do it? If God don't do it, it won't get done. Is that what's going on with these Bibles? Here's the thing. Yeah, As a lifelong native and still current resident of the great empire state, because that's what we call our state, next to the garden state. What's up, Brian? So um, here's the thing. Donald Trump was always broke. I mean, he ran for president the first time because he was running to pay his bills. He had to settle for Trump University. Y'all remember? And then 2020, he was running to still keep that little money in his pocket that he got, even though he accepted his presidential salary, saying he didn't accept it. That's a whole ass lie. When you was building a hotel during the time, your tenure of your residency inside the people's house. And then now you're really running hard and you're grifting off the people and people still dumb enough to give you some money. That's why he said his followers, his followers are a cult. They're a damn cult. And he ain't got that money. I, I can't wait for that raggedy ass building on fifth Avenue. Cause that's the dirtiest building on fifth Avenue to get C's because they already took some of his names down off the ones that's by my house. You don't think he I, has the money? I didn't think that he was broke, but I think the presidency enriched him beyond uh, all of our wildest dreams. That's all I'm. I mean, he. So you he's think got he's got some? He's got some mad money buried some damn where. He does think in his. Well, he's got lots of donations. He has foreign governments giving him money. He has people giving him money in hopes that he becomes a the president. They're lining his pockets, so he has a public. Uh, grift of now selling Bibles. Um, I'm soon, soon he'll be selling probably Holy Trump water. Uh, but in addition to that, you know, I think that there's a funnel of cash coming in from like people from all around the globe who are supporting him and helping him, I think, raise his money. I think that's what those, I, to be honest, I think that's what the sneaker, the sneaker grift was. I think that's what the Bible grift was. Cause y'all, y'all ever noticed that even with the Bibles today, it said that you would not receive it for four to six weeks. They don't buy the product beforehand. So they basically are taking who knows how many orders, right? Um, it's going to this funky LLC with a building in um, like, it's this little building, whatever it is ripe for money laundering. Like if you wanted to take foreign donations from across the way, how many Bibles are you selling? We don't know. He doesn't but have the Bibles up front. 
my thing is how do you how do you brand the Bible? Because it's not just the Bible, right? He has the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence. He has like a couple of different things that's on there as well. How do you take a Bible? Like, is how is that legal that you take a doc a, a, a something that's already created, you just package it together and you're able to sell it? And it's not cheap either, by the way. It's not like I didn't look at the price, but it's not like it's a sixty dollars. It's a sixty to $60. get the Donald Trump Bible. It's like sixty dollars, okay? It's like sixty dollars to buy your own Trump Bible. It says God I, bless actual the Bible's USA. like for fifteen dollars in the store, and then you could get it online depending it's, on. It's to keep have to wait for six weeks. But is it written upside down so that when he holds it, that we'll be able to read it the way that he holds it? It's got to be written upside down. Is it is it new is it new test old testament and then new testament because you know he doesn't know his testaments he don't even know what testament he living in. Oh my god! So I remember the, do you ever remember? I saw the video that just went by re viral again on CNN when they asked him about the Bible and he was the guy was he, he was like what is your favorite like Bible verse and he was like ah you know it's personal I don't want to talk about it and he's like the guy was like are you an old testament guy or a new testament guy and he's like uh equal equal. I was like, you have never read this book. You've never opened this book. Like, it's clear that you're not a Christian. Like, by any <laughs> it's clear. Like, and so I don't know. But my question is, how do evangelicals? How do evangelicals? This is the question for me. How do they still not see the truth? Because how do they sleep? How do they sleep at night? They're evangelicals. You know, it's in the name, evil. Evangelicals. Evil. So when when they do that fake praise and worship as a Christian, when they do that, they want to pull out the Old Testament on people because you know the Old Testament speaks about the wicked, even though they worship the wicked. Psalms thirty seven. Hello, somebody. I got I got an evangelist in here. Hi, Don. And then like you know, and then the New Testament talks about the the blood of Jesus. They ain't living in the New Testament. You know, if if Jesus was still uh, and you know, and it's Holy Week this week. And he's selling in the Bible and he don't even have the words right. It's Holy Week. He's an abomination. Crazy. Crazy. Sorry, y'all. No. I don't think that. I think the true Christians, and when I say the true, I mean the ones that actually do live by the book of God. I, I don't think that they are diehard Trumpers. But as far as like the evangelicals who use the, the church to grift, to, you know, um, avoid paying taxes, to enrich themselves. I mean, he, he's their best buddy. And also, too, he's also promising, if you look at what the Republican Party is doing, is they're promising, hey, we're going to get rid of pornography. We're going to get rid of abortion. We're going to get rid of the LGBTQ community. We're going to do all of the things that you want us to do. But, hey, we just need your support here. And, that, and that's what's happening. What I love is that, you know, there's a brand new show on Showtime or maybe Stars. I think it's Showtime that showcases the reality of King James and the fact that he was um, also a member of the LGBTQ community, uh, that he had numerous relationships or of an intimate nature with men. And that was a large part of why in his uh, as he was making people like William Shakespeare and other writers adapt the Bible and translate the Bible. He put certain language in there specifically to denounce the rumors of his own sexuality. That's a brand new show. That's, I think it's on Showtime, but it may be stars. I'm not sure the name, which one. And it's about a mother who was in court, who was determined to rise the ranks. And so she made sure that her son would seduce uh, King James. But also I want to say it's really a, it's, it's nasty work that Donald Trump, is selling Bibles during the Holy Week. It just dawned on me that this man did this and brought this out right at Easter time. Yeah. God is turning. He's going to resurrect on coming. Sunday just to blast Donald Trump. I'm sorry. I'm telling you, he thinks this election is his second coming, but child, nobody knows the time in the day and it ain't never coming back. You ain't never getting back into that old. Week. You ain't never getting back. And so you know what? He may think that he may think that November 24th is November 2024 is his second coming. Uh, it looks as though Ronald McDaniel thought that this week, time, week on NBC would be her second coming. But unfortunately she was sadly mistaken because the people were not having it. When I say the people, I'm talking about the journalists, but I'm also talking about those of us who counted on MSNBC for fair political news. Uh, she represents NBC's big mistake. 
Uh, Rona Romney McDaniel was hired by NBC to do news commentary on NBC programs as well as MSNBC. And the outcry was loud and it was plentiful. What do we think about this? I think we started off to go start off with, was it Brian or was it Carrie? You think Brian? Um, um, I don't know, but my, my, my take on it is good fucking riddance. I'm glad people are using their power to say what they need to say on social media. And we're seeing that people are listening, these corporations, like, again, we're in a new era. We are in a complete new era where people are listening to the masses that are doing the outcries on social media and they don't want the fallout. They don't want the backlash. Like gone are the days where corporations and media outlets were able to do whatever the fuck they wanted to do and not and not get any backlash. Like we've seen that multiple times through many different, ex, you know, different examples. Um, and this was this wasn't any different. This person, Ronna McDaniel, was somebody who peddled election misinformation and, and tried to, uh, you know, subvert democracy from her position in the rnc we let's not forget who this person was and then she came on to the airwaves and tried to go back and still say and say some of the same lies you know being uh, being a contributor what was going to happen when she became a regular no fuck that we don't need you in the fucking in the media we don't need to give you equal timing and at the end of the day we're glad that you're gone glad that she's gone and i think now she's trying to get legal counsel to try to sue or try to figure out what's going on there, but she should she, she should she should sue Donald Trump. She mm -hmm. should should sue the RNC for booting her out after she changed her name, after she gave away every amount ounce of morality and or, or uh, morals and ethics that she had. That's who she should sue because they're the ones who ruined her career. They're the ones who made her untouchable. Well, them along with her own bad decisions and her own lack of character and her own poor judgments. What is there to sue for? No one wants to see you. We're not going to let you tank this network the way that you tank the RNC. But the fact that they even thought and had her under consideration is the problem. Agreed. That, that's where we're having issues because you lose your credibility because we understand that corporate media is moving far right. It seems like they want more right wing talking points because they want to appeal or pull at, um, I guess, Fox's audience. But that's stupid. But it's not working. You're going to lose your core audience if you can. You're already that's losing right. your views at this moment because of how you're moving. And that's where the problem is. You have to think about, you have to re remember who your base are. We want honest reporting. We want credibility. Fox News is not trying to win us over. Fox News is not doing one single thing to get me to watch them as a viewer. But yet somehow CNN and MSNBC feel as though they should do more to appeal to the Fox News viewer. It makes no sense to me. The only reason Fox News has the leading ratings of cable news is because you have two networks competing against one. Fox News is the conservative outlet. CNN and MSNBC are fighting for the exact same audience. That's the problem. Their, well, their argument was, oh, well, Fox News on the five has Jessica Tarloff. And my thing is, that's not that's not remotely the fucking same thing. Not Jessica, Tar Jessica Tarloff was not the type of person who was out there making creating. And even if it was disinformation on, on our side, like it's not like she was cr she's creating facts and calling them alternative facts or making up things that benefit us. She's literally just going there and talking the truth when in reality, all the other four people on the, on that show are not. So th that's a completely different thing. And it's not like, oh, we need to go. look. The reality is the right has Fox News. They have Newsmax. They have OANN. They have all these different outlets. We they, at one point they are had. Are those real? Are those like like real though? Like no, they are. Three plus, they are. Shit, we got three plus one. I think three plus one is equal to those trash boxes. Well, yeah. Well, and we have well, look, and we have three plus one. But what I'm saying is that we don't we don't have a real platform that does the same thing that they do. Like we don't have anything that's comparable to what they do, right? Like where literally when Tucker Carlson was on that on on Fox News saying. The fact that no, he believed his his lawyer said this. That no one believed that this was actually real news, which is a fucking bullshit ass lie because they packaged it as news. But but at the end of the day, like we don't have a platform that's like that. And my question is, when are we going to have our side create a platform that's going to be combating that the same way? Yeah. Like we always say this with CPAC. Where's DPAC? Where, where is DPAC? <laughs> So, and that's a, uh, Terry, you were going to add in. I was going to say you got uh, you got Roland because you know Roland Martin made a big post today about how 
he is not funded. And if he only would, if he could yeah. only get a fraction of what they're giving to these other media, he could transform the landscape for black journalists and for liberal media, to, to, you know, today. And, it, it, you know, it's not there. And think about it. NBC and their president, Cesar Condi, was going to give Rona Romney McDaniels three hundred thousand mm. dollars to just show up and talk news every now and then. Mm. And look at all okay. of the educated, trained, professional journalists who lost their jobs in 2024 alone because newsrooms have shut down. But yet they're going to give this woman three hundred thousand dollars to show up and smile the way she smiles, looking like this, looking like this right here. Carrie, go ahead. I mean, here's here's what I gotta say. What 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 is Ronna McDaniel? What she she sucked at her job. Like, what insight is Ronna McDaniel gonna give us? How how to lose elections? How to how to lose elections? How to how to not fundraise? How to like what possible like what would she be contributing? I mean, if you want to talk about a job, getting a job, and not having the merits to get a job, there's a fucking example right there. She's bad at her job. She has no insight. And I think what we I think what we need is for a rich a billionaire to say, "Okay, I'm going to invest in a platform that is going to be telling the truth." Because the problem that MSNBC runs into is they have this like weird desire to to present both sides of a fucking lie. Right. Like it's a lie. We there is no both sides to that. We don't need you to push out the Republican talking points, which they do. Look at what happened with the Harvard, the president of Harvard, y'all. They were used, like mainstream media was used to push out the the Republican talking points and they fall for it every freaking time. And then they wonder why their base isn't tuning in anymore. And so what they're 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 in this conundrum of like, well, our base isn't tuning in anymore. Yeah, because y'all insist on doing this both sides type thing. So they keep trying to move to the right and mm. you're not going to get Fox News viewers. They're not right. going to come to you. So it would it would really behoove them. Behoove. I love that word. But it would really just. If they would just come out and say, you know what, we are going to make a conscious effort to tell the truth, to tell the story. We don't have some weird desire to only have Republicans on the Sunday shows. And when they do start pushing out their bullshit, we're actually going to push back against them. They would see all of us come back to them. They would. Yeah. And oh. here, here's the nasty piece. Of, I'm going to put Shantae. I'm gonna, let me say this real quick. Here's the nasty piece of content about that. The reality is that that Ronna McDaniel being hired is actually the DEI hire because she is the quote unquote diversity hire, the political diversity hire, right? The different thought process, the di the 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 um, diverse hire in thought process and, and thinking and political. She's an elite employee. Here. She's the diversity fucking hire. Her elite employee. That's it. That's what it is. Shantae, go ahead. That's what it is. Okay, so you know me. I like to throw out the whole name. Rona Ronnie. That's uh, McDaniel. Yes. Is she, That's is how she, she's a, family, is she family to Mitt Romney? Yes. She yes. you see that, them yes. eyes and that big old forehead? That she is she his niece. So Rona Romney. Yeah. That's Listen. because Trump made her change her name. There you go. And Rona Romney McDaniel, you know, I like to say it like that because that's how she say it. Romney McDaniel changed her name for that bum so she could get in his good grace, ruin her whole ass career. And then, you know, she, y'all forgot, she was on that call for Detroit where she was telling people, the electors in Michigan, hold out the, um, what you call it, certifying the elections. So, like, you know, Shout out to Lawrence O'Donnell for saying, um, it was a quote. He said, you can't be somewhere, somewhere where you do the crime. You can't, you can't, I forgot the quote and I quoted it. It was, it was, it was, it was crazy. It was, it was, it was crazy. But the way, cause he went in and he wasn't feeling good. He was not feeling good. Lawrence was, Lawrence was, had a cold, but Lawrence went in for six minutes. He was like, she called me, you know, a propagandist, but I've been called worse because, you know, he got smoked for all of them Trumpers. They know not to come to his show. They could, call, they could go to Joy's show. They could go to Nicole's show. 
but they can't come to or even go to um Joe and Mika show. God forbid. But they can't. Well, don't they, forget Joe. Joe and Mika were conservatives. Let's never forget the fact that Joe is conservative. Number yeah. two, they can also go and see what's that cat lady where Kitty always posts her and she has on that cat, the cat with the wig. Oh, Andrew oh, Mitchell. They oh, go. Yeah. They go over there too. <laughs> And you know, so crazy, but they never go to Lawrence's show because Lawrence be having the facts ready. He said, I worked in government. I worked in government. He he opened his thing with Tom Russett, Russett, Russert, and then, you know, and if Chuck Todd is the voice of reason, it's the voice of reason, something is wrong. But Lawrence O'Donnell nailed it within six minutes. Everybody else did a good job with going in on her, but Lawrence, you know, Lawrence had to come with it. Lawrence was like, look, you know, I mean, why she first of all, I'll ask her and I'll show her the questions. Why did you change your name? Why I'm did gagged. you do this? I'm gagged. I just looked at like, that's what I just looked up. Trump asked RNC chairwoman to stop using Romney in her name report. This is the hill. This is not, this is, this is real. Like this isn't a conspiracy. That's crazy. Yeah. Why hasn't this gone viral? When was this? But you know I mean, what's so crazy? She took office. Like that was a condition. Yeah, it's before she became the RNC. Yeah. was a whole. But he was a thirsty motherfucker too. Willard, yeah, Willard, Mitt Romney. I'm saying people full fledged names. Willard was so thirsty. Willard talked crap about him in 2016, but probably supported him. Was trying to get into his administration, like Christopher. They were so thirsty. Christopher um, James Christie was thirsty. Willard Mitt Romney was thirsty. They were all thirsty. And the reason why Christopher didn't get in, because Jared was like, you put my daddy in jail when you was DA, and, and no, when he was a U.S. attorney in New Jersey. And then Willard basically was like rejected by the Trumpers because he was talking crap in 2016. And Raphael was talking crap and Raphael jumped on board. And so was Lindsey Olin Graham. Lindsey, yes. And Timothy is trying to be his vice president along with um, it, it, it's, a, it's a couple of them. And Nimrata, if Nimrata was offered the job today, if Nimrata Nikki Haley was offered that job today, that woman will take that shit in the heartbeat. She will use her orphan husband because her ho husband was a whole ass orphan. That's why she's pro life, you know, because he was probably his mama probably was a drug addict, probably didn't want him, or she was she had no money, probably didn't want him. Yes, I'm I'm going there because Republicans, you know, they use their tragedy as why they're pro life and why they this. Allegedly, yeah, that's what I said. If Nimrata was to take that job, because Nimrata really wants to debate Kamala Davy Harris, vice president, not knowing that vice president, all I gotta do is pull up her history as a, as the um, governor of South Carolina, right then and there. She's she's already done, and especially her shortest. She's the shortest served U.S. ambassador in history. Mm. Mm. Can I? Can, can I just tell you something? Speaking of things that we didn't know and relationships that we didn't know, did you know that Bibi Netanyahu is really close with Jared Kushner's father? Not surprised. Mm. They're crooks. They're very close. In fact, when he came to the United States, like he kicked Jared out of his room and he would like crash in his bedroom. And I really think that's interesting considering that Jared Kushner was just talking about how... Um, they really want to uh it's going to be prime real estate now in gaza yeah. and mm -hmm. how they would be looking to you know um develop that and I, I just think that relationship is interesting particularly when parties don't want to sign the ceasefire and that's what we and that's, that's what we have to do as conflict creators. yeah that's what we have to do we have to get that word out we have to these what we we see a lot of Activated young people with great intentions and a great heart for change, protesting Democratic candidates and Democratic leaders, while Republicans are saying they want to wipe Gaza off the map and they're getting no smoke, they're getting no heat. Especially no Nimrata. We have to find a way to, to really help people understand that they're being used, that they're being uh, by the opposition to do the dirty work of the opposition, and they're not going to garner the free Palestine that everyone with a real heart wants. They're actually sabotaging that work. We've got to get the word out. Yeah. That's the piece of content right there, Jared Kushner saying that it's prime real estate. Beachfront condos, like I, I, like that, just made me sick to my stomach. And then I, I read that they, they are very close. 
And um, I we just need to all five of us. How disgusting that is. What we need to do is all five of us, like every week, pick like one thing and we all make a make one piece of content during that week about that one thing. So like this week, we should all make between now and Friday. And for those of you out there as well, you know, who want to join us, we should make a video uh, indicating the prime real estate comment beachfront condo. what that means beachfront condo what that means what it represents and why this is a part of a bigger plan that is the antithesis right. of a safe and secure israel and a free palestine uh we of course have here i i, I will lose the panel i know if, if we keep going over time uh we are definitely at the hour mark uh, the only other things we want to talk about was where in the world is Vice President Harris? And the answer is uh, this week she spent some time in Parkland, Florida, uh, doing uh, commemorating the uh, and, and fighting and advocating for gun gun rights. And uh, then we had Dark Brandon Rises, where we had some great clapbacks on social media. Wait, I want to say Kamala Harris also went to Puerto Rico. And she visited and continued that work to make sure that she's letting folks know what we're doing to help out um, the, with the disaster that still we're still trying to reel from in Puerto Rico. Um, and then th for the dark Brandon situation, it was more so like they are used that. And we talked about this last time, too. That campaign is doing their damn thing with using the platform like Donald Trump posted on his on his truth social to, by the way, apparently it only has 500,000 users. Right. So he doesn't really need to have an audience over there, but neither here nor there. He posted them that he has two. He won Wait. two championships. He has 500,000 users on True Social. That's but what they're getting ready to sell this company at an evaluation of four billion dollars. That was literally how was a social media company worth four billion dollars with only 500,000 users? That was money literally... laundering. That was right. That was literally right. Exactly. That was literally Jessica Tarlov's point. Uh, yes. on Fox on Fox News when she was saying she was like this this true social how is it valued at that point when it has only 500,000 users but neither here shout nor there. out to Jessica Tarlov yo yeah she but I, I don't know who she Donald is because I don't watch no Fox News on Donald Trump's uh true social he posted that he won two championships at his own golf course and he was saying how it was such a great thing that he was getting honored for it and there was going to be such a great audience there <laughs> And then Joe Biden quote tweeted that shit and said, "Congratulations, Donald! Quite the accomplishment." And 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 not only that, not only that, they also then posted a meme where it was Donald Trump giving himself the Presidential Medal of Honor. So I thought that was great. I thought that was great use. Look, continue. the president's always been petty, though. That's the thing. But, but the fact that now all he is a Scorpio viral like that, like that is what we really need. We need someone who, again, he's showing that he's taking off those gloves and we have to continue to, to spread that because those are the moments that not only go viral, but show not only his humanity and that he's relatable and that he understands and he's in touch. But the fact that we have to use that platform, which has more than like about close to 40 million people on there to see that he's fighting against it, because that's what we want. And I just want you know, to give a shout out to that plat the the Joe Biden team. If you want to go work for them, like if you're savvy and you're really good at clapbacks on the internet, you could get paid uh, seventy five thousand dollars a year to basically do that job. And they are hiring. Um, the only thing is, you have to move to Delaware temporarily to do it. But, uh, uh, I know, yeah. but that would be Dover. a cool job, though. Cool. Maybe. Kenny, I know you want you brought up the issue between and I, I'm still wondering to what extent is this like newsworthy yet uh, about the uh, affordable health care plan of the American Care Act. And then you also have these other competing plans they want to put in place. I don't think any of that's ever going to come to pass because I don't think these people are going to get in office. But I know that was if you could kind of cue that up. I want to do a deeper dive into that also next week. All right, we'll 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 just do that next week. We'll just hold off because. But I want to know why should I like? Why is this newsworthy? I'm saying I don't understand. Brian also had put it in the chat, saying it needs to be a topic. Early, you, early today, you put in the in the chat about well, I don't I know broke, what's happening. I hadn't well, seen I nothing. You a visual, pretty much breaking down. No, I saw the visual, but I'm like, well, what is this? Like so the hypothetical pipe dreams for Republicans. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to lower the income requirements for those who are individuals making less than 42000 a year. So what that basically means is if you're um, they want to make it income based and not necessarily helping those who are just helping people that are already at the bottom. Also, 
most of their policies is only benefiting the employers rather than the employees. So if they're going to remove certain mandates and certain requirements for health care and benefits for employers to actually be able to qualify for their employees. So in other words, if you're Boston and CEO and you only want to pay people 625, you don't have to give them health care. You don't have to give them any type of benefits. So with the ACA, that keeps that and holds the employer accountable for making sure that their employees are actually being able to get these benefits. So, well, I guess we can break down it in next episode because we don't got that much time. But is there any chance that that there, there's no way that's going to ever come into law? It can happen. No, it can happen, but it's it's unlikely. There's no, a, it, it's very likely. <laughs> how, okay, how, no, that's what I'm saying. I want to understand. In how could that Biden How could that come to, to be? In a Biden presidency, he's already vowed that he is going to protect the American worker. He's going to protect the people at the bottom. But under a Trump presidency and if they can get the house and the senate it's going to guarantee to happen because he wants to make mm. sure that right now the fit because uh the affordable care act is i see you're federal. saying if there's a republican majority across the board and they control yes. all three houses of government this is then they will easily be able to put this into play and yes, the only thing the, stopping it has been democratic control of a house or the presidency Yes, if they allow this to happen, what they're going to do is right now, the Affordable Care Act is uh, a federally controlled program. They want to put it onto the states. We already seen in certain states, even states like yours in Georgia, when we see that we put it and bring it yeah. back to the state level, yeah. you might lose funding. Y'all had money sent over to y'all to expand on Medicaid and y'all chose not to do that. Y'all just withheld those funds from the American the people. Governor what Brian do you think and the Republican control legislature chose that. But I guess you're right when you say y'all because the, the people voted. And exactly. we know what the people are according to Shantae. So, <laughs> That's why I said this is very likely if they want to put all this back into the states and say, well, the states can decide who can get this money. The states can put the age requirements. The states can put income requirements on this. Then this is going to be a problem for the American people. It has to be controlled federally because we can't trust the states. If you're in a red state, you're in danger. Yeah, And people also, young people don't have, see, this is, and that's another problem of why I'm like really struggling with young people. Because they never lived in a world where they didn't have health insurance under the Obamacare, under Obamacare. They don't know what that life is like. They don't, they don't know because it's been there for the majority of their voting, of their existence. Before we go off there, can I just say this real quick? Breaking news in Alabama, Democrat uh, Marilyn Lands defeated Republican Teddy Powell because she highlighted IVF and abortion rights in her campaign for a state house seat that was previously held by the GOP. That wait now wait what what position is what is this? This is state a house. state house seat. Oh, uh, so she won like an Alabama state house seat. She won an Alabama state house seat because she made IVF and abortion central to her campaign. I wanted, to and I also want to say that you said Alabama. I I just don't know if you caught yourself saying it that way, but I didn't say that was the most country thing I've ever heard you say. Alabama, Alabama. 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 That's how you said it. Mr. New Jersey, I'm just pointing it out. Yeah. So I want to just say that real quick. And I, and Jamie, and um, it is breaking news because Jamie Harrison just posted about it in the Biden HQ account, and just retweeted it. Um, Alabama's 10th state house district. And this is important because one of the things that we consistently talk about is how uh, IVF and abortion is going to be central to the 2024 elections. And it's going to be important that Democrats have, and, and they are, right? The Democrats are championing reproductive rights because this is a thing that is moving the needle. And we're not just seeing this in blue states. We're not just seeing this in blue areas. Alabama is a red, ruby red ass state. And at the end of the end, this is a white woman. Uh, this is a white woman. Can we put that on there? White woman, right? And Let's she, hope she remains a Democrat. And, and, she, she, said, flipped, and she flipped the seat. And she said, and she flipped the seat. And that is something that's big. We can do that. We can replicate that across the country. This is something that's not out of reach. And I want people to know that because this is what I was saying earlier, the hope message that we need to be given. The fact that we can, that there is hope but that's not on hope. the that's other not side. Hope. It's not hope. That's not hope. Hope. And so, well, Brian, if she won the seat because of fear. That white women have, they can't have children if they want to buy. That's, buy one thing, idea. Yeah. That's it's fear. Hope. It's not hope. It's fear. We fight for reproductive rights in a world where there's the, in a world where Roe v. Wade was overturned. 
look, people are tired of being told that this is a fucking consequential election. They hear that every fucking election cycle and they are tired of that shit. And, and, and we're talking about election cycles being sick, what they are, cyclical. Every election is going to be harder, no matter what, because if they see people right. like us, yes. we're, we're, we're America. And this is America true. on the panel. And that is true. But at the end of the day, people are tired of that same messaging. And I don't think that fear works on our side as much as much as it does on their side. And my argument is, and I wanted to go back to what Kenny was saying, was that hope, not just with cliches and platitudes, but hope by saying the achievements and the accomplishments that this org that this institution and administration has been able to accomplish is a very different thing. And hope won in 2008. Hope won in 2012, and it may not have won with Hillary Clinton, but there was a lot of things going against Hillary Clinton that we always can dissect. But we're talking about 2024. And in 2024, what I'm saying is that I think hope with substance and hope with policy, action and achievement is something that we can run on. Because it, while, yes, it is true that voters are ill-informed and uneducated and the vast majority of people don't have the education or not politically engaged, what is true is that we've we got into a place where at the ballot box, people are going to vote their feeling. And I'm going to I'm going to use that black that voodoo magic with Stacey Abrams and instill fear. So we going you going to try your hope, but I'm going to try my fear. Hope, I, be scared. Hope, Ugo, 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 Ugo. Look, hope I, won us the election in 2020. Keep the but something else is going to pop off before the election, just, and it's really going to get people off their behind and 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 prove Lenar Larry McAlvey's point wrong because the couch ain't going to win, Lenard. I just want to give I, a very Don and Don and Kev, your and we'll carry just very 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 briefly. Don and Kev, you're right, but this district, the Alabama 10th, did not include just Huntsville; it only included a portion of Huntsville. And also, you know, in Madison County, where this district is, it is 72 percent white, 72 mm. percent white. So, in Madison County, Alabama, is very very red. So, this is a this is a this is indeed you know a pretty big deal. So, shout out to the people of Alabama. And to white voters for coming out and fighting and defending their rights in the state. You're going to say, Carrie. I'm just going to go on the record right now and saying I, I truly believe that Joe Biden and the Democrats will sweep at, at a percentage that is going to blow everybody away. And, and I, I do honestly believe this. Um, I am perfectly fine with people feeling that this election is going to be close and that uh, we need to put that extra work in because we do. But if you ask me, hope is well, going to win. Population. I think mean, people enjoy, they might not realize it just yet, but life under Biden, we have a boring president that doesn't yell at us every fucking morning, right? We don't know if we're going to be in war when we wake up. The stock market, people are seeing their 401ks grow. And, you know, when you talk about getting those white suburban voters, that 401k has a shit ton to do with that, y'all. It, it does. It does. I agree, I agree with that. We I got, agree. We're going to we're going to get our legislators. We got to talk about the legislative branch. We're going to make that's going to be remain blue. The Senate may be a tough uphill battle. We we're still going to have probably fifty one to fifty two um, seats. We, we're, we're going to have that John Tester's crusty ass going with his seat along with Mr. Sherrod Brown. He going with his seat because you know Sherrod Brown. Jackie is, Rosen. Jackie Rosen has got to Jack, win Jackie seat Rosen has to win the seat. Everybody got to everybody that's a Democrat that's running as a Democrat got to win, to win we got, we have to. their seat. Period. We got to flip that house. We got to make sure Brooklyn runs Washington because Brooklyn right now is running Washington and we got to keep them running Washington. If you don't know who Brooklyn is, Congressman out of Crown Heights and Betsta, aka Hakeem Sekou Jeffries, and Brooklyn, South Brooklyn. Charles E. Schumer. Yeah, we got to keep Brooklyn in leadership because we got to make sure. And Angela also Brooks is where? That's in me. Maryland. That's me. Yeah. Angela. But, but listen, and that's a really good. Uh, now, I carry, I think, hands down, the popular vote is going to be hugely in favor of President Biden. But we've got to, we have to find a way to maintain the momentum in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. We have to find a way to finally come out on top in Nevada, Arizona, and Georgia. And, and Atlanta. We really, need to find a be, we really need to find a way to be competitive in North Carolina and maybe even Florida with 
you know, Donald Trump's poor standing in, against Nikki Haley and the people who are saying that they are never voting for him if they voted for Haley. With that being said, everybody, thank you guys so much for joining us. Every Tuesday we are here. It's an open seat, an open invitation to those of you out there. If you want to join us, just let us know. We have room for six and we'd love to have you sit in with us on a conversation. We'll see what happens next week and see what the big news will be. We'll see you soon.